In this lesson, we're going to look at characteristics of exp exponential functions. Recall the paper folding activity from the last lesson. This is the table that we generated, and we came up with the equation that f of x is equal to 1 times 2 to the power of x. Now we can use that function to predict numbers of layers that we created for any given number of folds. So if you figure out, if you wanted to know for 12 folds or 15 folds or 20 folds, even though you can't actually get to up to that high, in reality, or sorry, theoretically, if we can get there, um, how many layers would be created. Now, we also looked at some of the characteristics. We saw that A represented the y-intercept. So in this situation, when we have 1 times 2 to the power of x, that's y is equal to a times b to the power of x. a is 1, so our y-intercept is going to be 1. What about the parameter b? What does that do? We know that if b is between 1 and 0, that means our function will be decreasing. We also know that if b is greater than 0, which in this case it is, because b is equal to 2, so if it's greater than 1, then it will be increasing. Okay, and we knew that this graph looked like this, and it was increasing. Now, we also know that there is no x-intercept. We know that the domain will always go from negative infinity to infinity. And we always note that the range that will go from 0 to infinity. Why 0 with a round bracket? Because our graph approaches the x-axis, but never touches the x-axis. There's a name for this. It's called an asymptote. So it's like there's this imaginary line that's all along the x-axis that the graph will never, ever, ever cross. Okay, So you'll hear that word come up, asymptote. That's how it's spelled, if you're wondering. Okay, asymptote. Now, our end behavior will always go from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. And these will always be the same. Knowing these characteristics, we can find other information out about various functions. So let's take a look at the first example. It says, predict the number of x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the end behavior, the domain, and the range of the following function. Use the equation of the function to make your predictions, and then verify your predictions by creating a table of values and graphing the function. So before you graph, just look at the function itself. So we know that our function for exponential is always going to be y equals a times b to the exponent x. This function says y is equal to e to the exponent x. So that means our a value is going to be 1. We don't know we know that there's nothing there. We know that's going to be 1. But what about e? e is a funny um, number. We know that pi is a number, right? e is another number. Well, what does e represent? It's not just a variable like x and y. If you go into your calculator and just go into the main, you can see here we've got a little e to the exponent x. Go second e. And if we just do it to the exponent of 1, that would just give you e, because e, anything to the exponent of 1 is itself. And you can see the value of e is 2.71828182828, and so on. So it's just a number. Okay, We're using the base as e instead of 2, like in our other example. So don't get thrown by that e sitting there. So e is 2.71828. Seven 
and so on. So just a number. All right, so let's predict what's happening here. So in terms of our x-intercept, we know that sh there should be none because that's the property of an exponential function. We know our y-intercept should be 1. How do we know that? Well, because a is equal to 1. We know that the end behavior will go from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. We know our domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. We know our range will go from 0 to infinity. Right? And we know that since b is greater than 1, because it's e, and we just decided that e is 2.7 and so on, that means that our function is going to be increasing. So really, without ever putting that function into our graphing calculators, we can see that this is going to be true. Now let's go ahead and put this in our calculators and just look at the table of values. So if we put it in here, e to the exponent of x, oh, it already did that for us, and go into second graph, which is the table of values, we can see that our graph is going to start low at negative 3, it's 0 0.049, and then at negative 2, it's 0.13, and it is, in fact, increasing. So you can see how that's increasing. Now, if we hit zoom 6 and graph that, we can see that exponential function right there. And if we go to trace, we can see that our y-intercept is 1. So let's go ahead and graph that. Now I've kind of exaggerated this a little bit so we can see, but that's our function. All right, let's go ahead and try the next one. Make sure you label your axes x and y. So the next one says f of x is equal to 2 times 5 to the exponent of x. So if we write this out, a times b, the exponent of x, that would be our a value is 2, our b value is 5, the exponent of x. So we can see from here, there's no x-intercepts. The y-intercept corresponds with my a value, and I can see my a value is 2. So my y-intercept is 2. We're going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1 always. My domain doesn't change. It goes from negative infinity to infinity. My range doesn't change. That goes from 0 to infinity. Now what about our b value in this case? It is greater than 1. And a b value greater than 1 tells us that this will be increasing. So before I even put this into my graphing calculator, I just wanted to do a rough sketch. I would know, okay, my y-intercept is 2. So I can put that in here as 2. And it's an increasing function. So it should look something like that. Let's give it a try in our calculator. So putting that in here, I've got 2 times 5 to the exponent of x. We can look at the table of values and confirm, yes, it is in fact increasing, right? Starting at 0 0.016, 0 0.08, 0 0.4, 2, 10, 50, 250. It's climbing quite quickly. If I go zoom 6, you can see there it is. And it's steeper just because our values are climbing higher. Our base is bigger so that every time you put that to an exponent, it's going to climb even faster. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Oops. Example two. It says, predict the number of x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the end behavior, the domain, the range, and whether the function's increasing or decreasing. So the instructions here are the same, but our function looks a little bit different. And if you remember what we did yesterday, now our base is between 0 and 1. So what does that mean for our graph? We would anticipate that this should now be a decreasing graph. So if we start back at the beginning, x-intercepts, there are none. Our y-intercept 
corresponds to our b value, and we know that this is y is equal to a times b, the exponent of x. So a is 9, and b is 2 thirds. Did I just say y-intercept corresponds to the b value? It does not. It corresponds to the a value, and our a value is 9. So that would be our y-intercept. Our end behavior doesn't change for a decreasing function. Neither does our domain or our range. Remember that round bracket's there because we don't actually cross zero, we approach zero. And then our end behavior, oh, we already went through our end behavior Q2 to Q1, but our B value tells us if we're increasing or decreasing. And because B is between zero and one, because it's two thirds, it will be a decreasing function. All right, put this into our graphing calculators. So I've got nine times two divided by three. It's important that you know how to put that in your calculator too. If we look at our table of values, you can see it starts high, 30.375, and it's decreasing at quite a quick rate. Okay, zoom six to see the graph. And you almost can't even see that y-intercept. So if I increase the window here, my y-max, let's make it 20. Well, it started at 30 at negative 3, so why don't we make this 40? Okay, so if we start way up at 40, and you can see how it's decreasing there. And you can also see when I hit trace that our y-intercept is in fact 9. So we put that on here. Make sure you label that y-intercept. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. 8, f of x equals 8 times 3 quarters to the power of x. So if we have y is equal to a times b to the exponent of x, we know that our a value is going to be 8, and our b value is going to be 3 quarters. So what does that tell us about our graph? Well, it doesn't tell us about our x-intercepts, we still have no x-intercepts, but it does tell us that our y-intercept is now going to be 8, because a is equal to 8. Oops, and behavior stays the same. Domain and range haven't changed. but our b value is between 0 and 1. It's not greater than 1, so once again we have a decreasing function. And if we were to draw this without even looking at our graph, we would know that it would be decreasing, so it would have that same behavior, but your y-intercept would be 8. This would be x, and this would be y. Let's double check with our graphing calculator. So that would be 8 times 3 divided by 4 to the exponent of x. Have a look at the table. You can confirm that yes, it is decreasing. If we look at our graph, so it's not decreasing at the same rate as the previous one. It's a little bit shallower. If you want to compare the exact same window, you can change that y max to 40 again. And you can just see how that compares to what we were doing. So you can see it's a much shallower decline than the previous one, which was much, much steeper. All right, so now that we have that done, we can see from these different from these different graphs and these different examples that knowing the main characteristics of an exponential function can tell you lots about the graph without even using the calculator. And that's going to help us figure out other information. So let's take a look at example three. This is the last example in this lesson. And in this example, they give us four different 
functions and four different graphs and it's our job to match each graph with the function and actually understand why that graph matches now when I look at them I can see that graphs a and b are increasing and I can see graphs C and D are decreasing. The other thing I can notice is our y-intercepts. So for A, it's an increasing exponential curve that goes through y-intercept of two. Well, that also tells me that, whoops, jumping around, that my A value should be two. For B, it's an increasing function so increasing means b is greater than 1. I can see that my y-intercept is 4, which tells me also that my a value is equal to 4. Okay, for c, I can see it's a decreasing function, so b is going to be between 0 and 1, and I can see that I have a y-intercept of 3, or it has an a value of 3. And for D, I can see it's decreasing, so that means B is between 0 and 1 again, and my y-intercept is equal to 4, which means A is equal to 4. So knowing this, without even looking at the functions yet, will definitely help me figure out which function matches which graph. So if I look at A, back to A, a function that has an a value of 2, well, this is the only one that has an a value of 2. So number, so a has to be number 4, right? If I look at b, an increasing function, so that b is greater than 1, and it has an a value of 4. Well, this is an a value of 4, and this is an a value of 4, but 2 has a b value that's greater than 1, where 3 has an a value that's between 0 and 1. So from there, I conclude, conclude that b would be 2. So that means that 3 would have to go with d, right? Because this is the other one that had an a value of 4 and has a b value that's between 0 and 1. So that would mean that 3 would be D. And all I'm left with here is that C would then have to be 1. Let's confirm that. Well, an A value of 3, yeah, it has that. And a B value that's between 0 and 1, and yes, it has that. So that would be the last one. All right, let's summarize our findings below here. Equation 1, y equals 3 times 0 0.2 to the exponent of x has a y-intercept of 3, so it has to be graph C. y equals 4 times 3 to the power of x was equation 2. It has a y-intercept of 4, but so did equation 3, which is y equals 4 times 0 0.5 to the exponent of x. We knew that they both had a y-intercept of 4 because they both had an a value of 4. The difference being for equation 2, b was greater than 1, because it's 3, it's an increasing function, so that meant it would have to be graph b, whereas for um, the next one here, for 3, it had a b value of 0.5 between 0 and 1, meaning it was going to be decreasing, so that was graph d. Finally, we were left with graph a, and that matched 4 because y equals 2 times 4 to the power of x and our y-intercept was 2. That was the only graph that had an a value of 2. All right, so that's it for this lesson. If we take a look at the next page here, we have a nice summary that is very helpful in just summarizing what's going on with the characteristics of exponential functions. Okay, looking down here at our graphs, we've got our increasing function, our decreasing function, and you can see here our y-intercept is a in both cases, increasing when b is greater than 1 and a is greater than 0, decreasing when a is greater than 0 and b is between 0 and 1. Thanks for joining me today.